and all the crazy moves and everything. And then the dude that actually knows what he is, like, boop, right in the nose. That's CJ. Like, boop. That's exactly the way he describes it, too. Boop, right in Lou Anarumo's nose. Take that, Lou. CJ Stroud talked to the media ahead of the Cardinals game. I got to be honest with you. I haven't seen much of this press conference yet, but from what I have seen of it, looks very dark and foreboding, like the Dark Knight series of the CJ Stroud press conferences. I hope that doesn't mean anything. I hope that's not foreshadowing. I will recap the questions in case it's hard to hear. I boosted the audio a little bit, but we know how this goes. CJ Stroud, ladies and gentlemen. How good does it feel to see your teammate, to see Motor get, you know, player of the week? Man, it's huge. I mean, I, I definitely felt like he deserved it. He he he's somebody who works his tail off, man, and he's um, he's came a long way in his career, all the way back at FAU to here, you know. And he's always been a really good back, but you know, people have always doubted him, um, his size and everything. But I mean, he proves people wrong, um, and proves himself right consistently, you know. So um, it's somebody that I, that I ride for. Uh, definitely is a brother of mine. I love him to death. He's a great dude. Um, and and I, I know that uh, he's going to continue to work and, and be resilient like he's always been. And um, I'm really proud of him, and I can't wait to see his career go on and on. I hope I can play many, many years with, with Motor. Um, yes, yeah, my brother. So a couple things about Devin Singletary. First, uh, AFC Defensive Player of the Week with 150 yards last week. I think having him get into a flow, get all the carries, be able to – center the play calling around him has helped Bobby Slowick, but it's also helped the offensive line. I think this is the first time we've seen real cohesion amongst those guys. And the Cardinals held the Falcons to 70 yards passing last week, but let up a boatload of yards versus the run. So I think we might see that same script for the Texans uh, running the ball a lot, maybe having as much success as they did versus the Bengals last week. <laughs> Talks about the players and just the reason why y'all have had success often mentions you. Where do you feel like though Domingo has had the biggest imprint on this team? Like where do you feel him most in kind of helping this team get to where it is? Uh, so the question was, where do you feel like D'Amico has made the biggest imprint on getting this team to where it is? Uh, yeah, I think it's just in his um, attention to detail, um, his decisiveness on making decisions and um, I also think that like the standard that he holds, not only for himself but for us as a team, like he keeps it at that. You no, know, when we're not when we're not looking right or uh, when we need to pick it up and things like that, and he's not a he's not a, a mean cuss, and I appreciate that because like um, if a coach is like that, like cool, they're like that. You deal with it, you understand that's them as a person. But he's not like that, so he doesn't ever try to get out of character, which. As a man, you can respect, you know, because, like, you can tell when a coach is faking it and trying to yell, and that, that's not really them. So, like, for him, like, he holds us at a standard in his way um, on letting us know with great communication, you know, picking things up. And then he praises guys as well, which a lot of coaches sometimes don't do either. So um, he has a good balance on how he does both. And uh, Who said the standard is the standard? I'm going to have to Google that and add that. The standard is the standard. I think with D'Amico – there's a lot that I'm going to make a weird comparison here, but I'll compare him to Andy Reed in that Andy Reed is known to run one of the toughest training camps in the NFL and coaches, players will talk about how tough a coach Andy Reed is. And then you contrast to, to Andy Reed's actual personality. It's not that he's a, as a CJ said, a mean cuss. It's that he just holds guys to high standards and the attention to detail part too. I mean, that's, I, I've had multiple different coaches and like playing for Tom Coughlin versus playing for Gary Kubiak. Those are two different ends of the spectrum when it comes to personality. But I think the common theme, I thought about this a lot. The common thing amongst really good NFL coaches is an extreme attention to detail. Along those same lines, where do you want to be felt? How do you want to be felt amongst your team? So the question is, uh, where do you want to be felt I mean, no. we all want to be felt in certain common places. Where do you want to be felt by the team? Um, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, you know, so like, I would say, man, you got to go ask them. Like, I don't want to ever come up here and say I want to be this way or that way. Um, and, like, their, their whole dynamic on who I am is different, you know. So um, and I, the main thing I want to be is just something, somebody they can trust, you know, some trustworthy person. Um, and, and somebody who, who they know they can trust through thick and thin. And I think that's where it starts for me, you know, it starts and ends. Because um, you can put a whole different 
like you can put 50 categories in that word of trust on what they trust you for, you know. So um, for me, that's probably the biggest thing. But I would say, man, you got to ask them. Like, I don't want to ever, like, force myself on anybody or, like, uh, make it feel like just because I'm the quarterback, you guys got to follow my lead, you know. I want it to be natural and thorough. Um, and I feel like, um, of course, I feel like I, I've done that a little bit, but I'm still trying to keep that going, you know. So um, it's been amazing just have them have my back through everything. And um, every time I address the team or have something to say, they always listen and think I'm building it, you know. So um, it's been pretty cool to see. Um, I think that, look, CJ talks a lot about humility, and I think that certainly shines through when he talks about, you know, <laughs> First of all, not putting words in his teammates' mouths. And uh, uh, like a, a certain maturity when he talks about there could be 50 different categories of trust. Like he just, he gets things. He gets things that a lot of 22 year olds don't get, that a lot of 48 year olds don't get. So that part, I think I, I really appreciate about CJ. The other part, too, is as he was saying, he doesn't want to put words in teammates' mouths. I, I couldn't help thinking about somebody I knew once who I was interviewing for something who, um, had a had a pile of nice cards that former employees had written to him. And I was looking through the cards and all these things that people were writing, gushing about him. I was like, man, this this looks like pretty similar handwriting on a lot of these. And like one male's handwriting is pretty similar and one female's that might have been they were trying to write differently. But I think it was him and his wife that had written all those cards. I I don't think CJ would ever pull that stunt. No, it was not Jack Easterby. Even the advanced stats show how open Noah Brown is. What is it about him that makes him such a constant threat and the timing that you guys have built, how much is that plus plus? Uh, so I believe that was Aaron Wilson asked about Noah Brown and the advanced stats showing how wide open he is. Why is that? And could you talk about the relationship you two have formed? Uh, he's been really intelligent. He's been very smart. Um, he comes from a different type of offense, but um, football is football. He's been able to just be a ball player. Um, he, he feels coverage really well. He knows when to break. He knows like when to cut cut things. Um, and, and he blocks his tail off too. Like I think that's something he's very, very great at. And that's what kind of helps him get open and play action and things like that. Um, and uh, he's been amazing. He's been a, a safety blanket ever since he's gotten back. And Noah has, has definitely been a, a leader in that room. And he's not a, a man of many words, but he's a leader of example, which is really helpful. Um, but yeah, he's very intelligent, very smart, and I'm really proud of him and can't wait to keep playing with him. And um, uh, I'm really excited to see what he does for the rest of the year. His ability to read coverages, Noah Brown's ability to read coverages and understand kind of where to slide into and slice through different zones on the offense, that really shows up. I mean, you can see that on the TV copy. But the play action part, that's that's one of the benefits. Aside from being able to spring big runs, having these wide receivers who, who are willing and capable run blockers, yeah, the play action, it makes a huge difference because – the dude, and you see this, you know where you see this is George Kittle. I love watching George Kittle with the 49ers because when he's blocking before he goes out on a route, man, it looks like he's trying to destroy the dude. They're not just doing it faking. They're not just faking it. And I think likewise with the receivers, when they're looking like they're going to run block and then they release on a route, that's part of selling it. And you got to have 11 guys selling it. This crew, if, if you haven't ever heard me gush about this wide receiving group, and how gritty and tough they are and how they block. Oh my gosh, you're, you're going to get sick of it, I promise you. Please subscribe so you can get sick of me talking about the wide receivers blocking. Oh, there's a lot of you know outside chatter about you being in the MVP race. When you go back and you look at film, how hard are you on yourself? How, how much of a self-critic are you? How critical are you of yourself? Uh, I'm really hard on myself. Um, I'm honest with myself. At least I, I try to aim and even when I'm, I try to get myself leeway. My coaches don't allow me to. So um, it's a great balance that we have. And when we watch film, and we're just brutally honest with each other, hold each other accountable. Um, and I, I feel like I, I make some plays, but it's some things that I like. I still need to get better on for sure. You know, um, and I feel like it's everybody every week. Um, this game is 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 a is a trustworthy game, and it, 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 excuse me, it's a um, it, it keeps you honest and it keeps you humble. It, um, you know, so it's a humbling game, and it makes you really, really look at yourself in the mirror and see did you prepare the right way, did you do this the right way, because um, everything will be um, tested on that Sunday. The honest God don't lie, you know. So um, it, it's been it's been cool to be able to be in a talk, but like just like they hate, they love me this week, they hate me the next. So I don't. I try to look at that stuff. I try to stay even kill and just stay on a straight and narrow um, and, and just work really hard and, and um, make my teammates around me better. So, I like that 
he uses humility and or humble in the right way, as opposed to people who sometimes talk about how something is humbling. They're using it like almost as like a, a backhanded way of pointing out how often uh, awesome the honor they've received is. It's just so humbling. Uh, being named the best person in the universe is very, it's very humbling, isn't it? And I accept it with great joy. After all, I am the best person in the universe, aren't I? Uh, like CJ is talking about, man, this game will knock you the hell down. And when you do it as a quarterback, when you're knocked down as a quarterback, it's when you're playing the Carolina Panthers, when people are going to point out that, oh, you fell short versus the guy that was drafted in front of you. Oh, you had less than 200 yards passing, all of that on a huge, huge stage. And I think CJ, more than anybody, more than me or a lot of us, uh, remembers, hey, it was three weeks ago that we had a really, really bad performance versus the Panthers offensively. So, like, that part, I just, like, I don't worry one bit about CJ's head getting too big in the offseason or anything uh, or or getting super, super weird like some young quarterbacks. Well, I'm, uh, I'm cool with that with CJ. Uh, I added the very beginning to the end here just because it's blurry AF, and I don't know what the question was. So let's just hear what this 15-second answer was as he was blurry. Being um, treated as a rookie anymore, you know, so uh, people are bringing their A game uh, because they want to knock me off, my whatever they think, you know. So uh, for me, I just want to really want to keep getting better and better um, and, and keep yes. that chip on my shoulder and just keep and keep grinding. And uh, like what he said, people are throwing everything at him. I think we've talked about this. The defensive coordinators like Lou Anarumo last week threw a bunch at him, blitzed him, played coverage, did everything he could. And you, you know when CJ gets blitzed now, He's really, really good against the blitz. It's almost like you invite it. It's like it's like in a kung fu movie when somebody starts doing all the crazy moves and everything, and then the dude that actually knows what he is, like boop, right in the nose. That's CJ. Like boop. That's exactly the way he describes it too. Boop, right in Lou Anarumo's nose. Take that, Lou, big Lou. 